Okay, the next item on our agenda is a superintendent's report. Okay, so I use this opportunity just to uh, scare a lot of the audience out of the crowd right now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is an opportunity where I just report back to the board since our last meeting and uh, some follow-up and some events that occurred at the district office. Um, we are in the process of, of reviewing our staffing projections. Uh, Tim and I are meeting with Pam and her staff this week uh, to hopefully start finalizing staffing. Um, we're projecting about a just, just about 3.0 FTE increase. Right now we have 1,438 students registered for next year. We have another 20 that have tested. Um, and we expect to register by uh, the end of next month, which will, be, which will give us to 1458. And if our projections hold consistent with about 50 transfers, we'll come in at 1508, which is about five students under what I recommended and Tim projected. Um, when we did the projections uh, in November of 1513. Um, we are building in, in the projections, uh, staffing for those transfers. Uh, so some of the class sizes will look uh, and the averages will look slightly lower than expected but there's open seats for pro you know approximately 50 students in, in just about each department um, so Pam is gonna work with her staff to come up with a couple different scenarios and how they want to place those um, and we'll go from there and we'll have a final report for the board uh, in March um, we had a meeting this week with DLA. We're in the process of scheduling our life safety plan and uh, the facility maintenance plan. One of the first steps in that process is actually getting all of our um, blueprints and phase one, two, and three prints, um, which since I've been here, that's been somewhat of an issue, just kind of locating and giving all of our prints together. Joel has been working on that for about the last year, but we did reach out to the printer on the bottom of some of our prints and he had uh, archive files of all of our, a majority of our prints, so we got those picked up and DLA is in the process of putting those out digitally and uh, saving those for, uh, getting us a copy so we have them on digital file and they're gonna organize them and put them into a organized format for us of all of our different prints and mechanicals. Do, do we have another student? Yeah, just yeah, student fight through the snow. Oh, all right, sure. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I think we need to recognize <laughs> Come on up, Alex. Alex Escobedo is here. So, Chess you're team member. Here. So, congratulations. <laughs> Mr. That's for you. Look in the camera right over there. I do want to say one thing. Absolutely. You're welcome. Um, Come on up. Like that. For Alex, uh, first of all, a three year member and a captain this year, and he's, and he's the first board, which is the hardest board. So he's playing the top kids in the state from every team. And he played the number one freshman uh, in the state from Highland Park, beat him. Um, it was his only loss. That, he, that kid finished 15th in state overall out of thousands of players. And Alex beat him. It was it was one of the greatest matches. He was so spent after the <laughs> man, the match. Um, I actually I did something very un I subbed him out, which you never do for a first board. But we needed to save his brain for the last <laughs> round, and we subbed him out. And Grant, who was the alternate, played amazing. And he's really a ninth board playing first board. So wow. it was a great it was a great That's strategy. Really but wow. it was to beat the number one freshman in the state is. is Quite a, an accomplishment. How did he react so. when you beat him? Oh, he was not happy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, he was just shocked. Yeah, just he was. Shocked. He was angry. He was not. He was wanting to go seven and zero as a freshman, and and I'm and sure you were a gracious winner. Absolutely, oh, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> as he's That's throwing stuff at you, there. saying, "Get out of here!" You know, <laughs> yeah. Congratulations. So, nice job. Wow. I have a question for Mr. Monty. Do you, do you have, uh, I watch ESPN every so often when I can't actually watch the football game and watch the moves. Is there something like that in chess? Um, um, some record of what Alex did as the first board? They, uh, the, the stu every student is required to keep notation for every match. Yeah. And so that's my job as the coach is when, the, when their match is yeah, over, we go over the game and see if there's a better move here or a better move there. Or, um, so the, the students have their own record of, of the game. 
I mean, is there a match on YouTube we can watch? Uh, no, they, uh, they usually <laughs> don't allow electronic devices during chess oh. matches because you can cheat with them. For good reason. You know, so, so there is no video, no. Okay. But it's, uh, they do have their own record of, of the game, and it's, it's sometimes they're, it's quite impressive to go over the game with them. And it, it, tell you how boring I am. Well, no, it's not boring. Of course, you're the head of the chess club. but. Uh, I used to read chess books that uh, talked about famous move. Right. Uh, you know, and yeah. all they were is chess is not much of a no, uh, spectator sport. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you get parents coming who want to sit and watch, and it's really not much of a sport. Bring their knitting with. Them. Right. All right. Thank you. Okay, so Kevin, I'm sorry we interrupted. Congratulations. But, uh, I want to give you to finish your report. Yeah. Uh, so with DLA, we're we're organizing our blueprints. Then we're going to start to put together a schedule. They're going to try to get in here during spring break to do. Um, a portion of that work uh, when the students are not present um, they're gonna have to wait to get on the roofs till the weather breaks um, but they're hoping to have uh, first draft of the life safety report and the facilities uh, plan uh, here by the end of spring um, and then we'll go through a couple phases of that with reviewing with the board and the facilities uh, council and the entire board um, we also are in the process right now of working with the vendor to do uh, the specifications test and a test and balance on the pool HVAC to try to um, get a, a, a report on where we're running at and there with some of the concerns that were cited in that community report. Uh, they should be coming out next Monday during the Staffed Institute day to do that test and balance report. Um, the Village of North Riverside passed the intergovernmental agreement last night. We've already had one meeting with their Parks and Recs Department to discuss the, the community swim and the uh, field exchange uh, intergovernmental agreement and we're in the process of finaling an intergovernmental agreement uh, with uh, the purchase of gas for our vehicles. So that's pretty much it from the superintendent's report. Any questions for Kevin? Kevin, that, that test and balance, uh, who's paying for that? Right now the district is paying for the vendor uh, to bring it up to, to to check the specifications and to run the test and balance. What's, what's that running? Uh, I, I do not have that quote in front of me. Then if, uh, based on that report, we'll have our uh, architect sit with the board and review it and provide us analysis based on that report. Okay. Any other questions? Recap. 